Hey guys, welcome to this very special episode of our Cheap Truck Series. And today we're mixing it up because we've brought three trucks that are huge and get this expensive. And we're gonna put them through a series of tests, including a drag race, both fast and slow, an MPG challenge, and best of all, we're gonna send them through very difficult obstacles right here in Moab. So let's see what the boys brought. I'm driving a Ram 2500 Cummins with a lift kit, Fox suspension, 37 inch tall tires, an AEV front bumper, a worn winch, and this truck comes in at right around $93,000 as fully equipped with these aftermarket upgrades, which sounds like a ton of money until you hear what the other guy's trucks cost. Howdy folks, Nathan here inside the brand spanking new GMC Sierra AT4X Duramax diesel. And I am so excited to be in Moab, Utah, driving this thing. It is extraordinary. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> $104,000. Yes, that has a lot of dough, but you think that's a lot of money? You should see what Andre's driving. <laughs> 2023 Ford Super Duty. It's an F350 and it's a very special truck. It's the black edition by Elevation Off-Grid, which means I have a very, very fancy suspension. It's a liquid spring smart suspension. As I'm climbing this baby lines back, it's height adjustable, it's active. I'm gonna exercise it all the way and I'm rolling on 37s. And my truck with the bumper and the winch and the extra lights and the suspension wheels and tires is $125,000. Yep, I'm the most expensive but I'm also the fanciest, and I think I will win any challenge that these guys throw at me. This is the world's slowest drag race. Now, you may be wondering why slowest, and that's because when you're off-road, you want to move slow. To be able to crawl over rocks, you want to go as slow as possible. So we're going to find out which of these trucks is not the fastest, but the slowest, so let the race begin. All right, here we go, boys. Four truck win. Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh no, Ram off to a bad start. Cruising ahead of the Chevy and the Ford. There's two miles an hour already. Slow down, Ram. So Tommy has a six speed automatic. Nathan has a 10-speed automatic. We're basically neck and neck. I have a 10-speed automatic. Uh, Nathan and I's gearing is pretty close. Ha ha! Finally won a drag race. I think I'm, I, I actually lost that. That's what that means. Shoot. Roman, who is winning? I came in second either way. So I'm either the first loser or the second winner. I won! I am the slowest! Yes! Nathan, that was neck and neck the entire way. Yeah, I was on the edge of my seat. This is Overbite. It's one of the hardest obstacles here. I know it may not look like it, but it's a really great test of approach. More importantly, this is where you're gonna bust a half shaft or explode a diff. So let's see if these trucks are big and broad enough to make it over overbite. This is what they call an undercut where the rock protrudes above the base layer, which is a really tricky obstacle to do well because you can uh, really basically jam your front axle into the slot in the rock and end up with the broken uh, drivetrain. So we're gonna take it real slow, see how the ram is. Really hard to modulate this ram in four low, by the way, and be smooth. Oh no! 
The, the, the front end is too heavy. It doesn't want to climb at all. Even if I aired these tires down to 15 PSI, there's just so much weight pushing it down. And we are a little aired down in this truck, by the way. It's still just nothing. It's just not having it. All right, so the least expensive truck did not make it up and over overbite. Let's see if uh, Nathan can do better in the GMC. Hey, man, nice for the 11th passenger straight around. There you go. I think I'm a little hung up on that. So, so here's the thing about heavy duty trucks, especially diesels. They're incredibly cool, they're incredibly fun, but they're incredibly heavy, especially in the front. So when you have an obstacle like the overbite, you've got all that weight in front and not enough traction. Maybe Andre can do it with his uh, F-350. All right, Andre, go for it. Well, Three inches, two inches, going an inch, going, going. Yeah, oh yeah, you can do it. All right, get rid of these. Andre, you know what you need, my friend? What? A front locker. Uh, yeah. You know one more go. Wow, I got smoke from the tires. Oh, Andre, I'm so sorry. So, uh, three trucks, Tommy, and three fails. Look, maybe if they were our trucks, we could go, whoom! No, we couldn't. One thing breaking your own truck, another thing breaking other people's trucks. It's only $125,000. <laughs> but that's right. We still have a bunch of great obstacles to test these trucks, so let's keep going. One of the challenges we are all facing off-road is a limited amount of articulation, especially in the rear axle of these trucks. And you can see, even on this fairly small rock, this Ram is two-wheeling to a big extent. I can just rock it back and forth all day. And you can really see what's going on here. The rear sway bar is super big and juicy to keep this truck nice and stable when you're towing, when you're driving off-road, but it really limits the travel when you're off-road, and that gives you a very small amount of articulation, and you have a tendency to pick up wheels and tires on the relatively minor obstacles. This is Framebender. It's kind of a reverse overbite. Basically, the trucks come down. It's a really great test because if you hit the frame bender, you will potentially bend your frame. Let's see how this ram does. Three at me. Two feet. It's going over. Two over. Sounds like the Titanic. Oh, no clearance issues whatsoever. How about the back? Taking it really easy. Oh! oh. Hit the hitch! A little bit of a bend there, Tommy. Luckily, not the frame. Yeah, I think it's gonna be all right. Man, with heavy duty trucks, you better come with somebody to help you over these obstacles, because I can't see anything, even with I these cameras. Just come right at me. Two inches, here you go. And still getting a massage as I slide down the hill a little bit. Let's see if you hit the back. Let's not see if I hit the back. I, I may I may have bumped something little, uh, just a little, little bump. This is the hardest way I've ever gone. Take you guys over the hardest way, all of you. All right, let's see if you cannot hit your butt. Well, I'm in the highest level. Do I hit? Oh yeah. Oh, that was the hardest way ever. Yeah, of course. You get the biggest truck ever. Oh, jeez. Under the hood of the Ram 2500 is a straight six Cummins 
turbo diesel. It puts out 370 horsepower and 850 pound-foot of torque. It is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission. And no, this is not the high output engine, but you know what? It's still a bloody cool truck. Do you like 470 horsepower? Do you like 975 pound-feet of torque? You're gonna love this 6.6 .6 liter diesel. Oh yeah! And it has a 10-speed automatic transmission. This is way more powerful than the Ram. Ford did something really special in 2023 model year for the Super Duty because they put a high output turbo diesel V8 under the hood. 500 horsepower and 1200 pound-feet of torque out of this puppy. And it still has a 10-speed automatic made by Ford. All right, well, I have uh, tow haul mode engaged, traction control off, two-wheel drive, so let's do this, dude. Awesome, let's do it. All right, fellas, I'm gonna count you three, two, one, and then go. Three, two, one, go! Oh, yeah. I did lay down a little tiny bit of rubber, and he's killing me. There he goes. Come on, Rob! Whoa. This thing really does have some guts. He's still pulling away. I don't think the start would have mattered. And uh, across the line. Sixteen ninety-eight. Sixteen point two three and ninety-one miles per hour. Three, two, one, four. There he goes again. Yeah. There you go again, Nathan. <laughs> Congratulations, you won another one. Whoa, this is neck and neck. This is super close. I, I, maybe I brake torque it too much. And now my 500 horsepower beast is moving up. Bam! Under the circumstances, I think it was actually a really good race. I did score 15.71 quarter mile here at the mile above sea level and a speed of 92.7 miles per hour. Come up again. This is 30. Three, two, one, go. What? Yeah. How am I losing this? You kicked my butt on the rolling race, dude. Yeah, um, this thing just is really spry. And by the way, very, very smooth. Okay, well, I'm gonna say that I won this entire day uh, because I, was, I had the quickest quarter mile. All right, this is One Tree Hill. Now we know that these big burly trucks get up one of the hardest inclines here in four wheel drive but can they do it in two-wheel drive? See how high you can get, and if you need to, switch it to four-wheel drive, but two-wheel drive first, please. All right, let's see if we can get up this in two-wheel drive. Yeah, I don't think we are gonna get up it in two-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive time. Stay away from the tree. Even in four-wheel drive. Come on, baby. Woo -hoo -hoo. But a little bit of speed goes a long way. Yeah, a little bit of momentum. Okay, more momentum. I vote for four-wheel drive. Lockers on. Should be a lot different this time. Ah! 
and my seat is still massaging me. <laughs> So I'm in dual drive and my truck is letting me use my rear locker. Uh, should I nail it? No, no. <laughs> I'm switching to four wheel drive low. Yeah, I don't know if Andre slammed into the tree or not, but it certainly sounded like he did. All right, we're filling up after our road trip. We drove 263 miles according to GPS. We always use our two-click method. We filled up in Boulder. We're now filling up here in Fruta, Colorado. Let's see how this Ram did. And that is the final result. We used 14.882 gallons. Put this back here. So, 53 miles driven divided by 14. 0.882 is 17.67 mpg. No, Nathan, 14. No! Five. No! Stop it. No, it's oh. not going. <laughs> Thank you. Right, Damn seconds. it. <laughs> Dear God, Nathan. <laughs> So we got 263 miles driven divided by the GMC 16.022, 16.4. Well, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it is four. Yeah, and and the the truck said 16.5. So oh. I'm the most accurate. That's the most important thing, really. And as always, TFL runs on Sinclair. You can save money on fuel. And also you have uh, additives in your diesel, Nathan. So I use 14.8 gallons yes, yes. in my truck after the second click. Yes. You're at 14.1 before yes. the second click. Yes. So I'm really hoping this, this is, is a, a huge click. click. Oh my gosh, oh, you guys no. suck. <laughs> Do you know why? Tell me. Why? I have a rear axle ratio that's good for efficiency. 331 to 1. Your final number? Yes. 18.2 MPG. Victorious? All right, guys, this is the wall. It's pretty much a straight up slick rock covered in sand obstacle. I'll be really surprised if any of the trucks can actually make it up this because they're heavy, they're big. And they don't articulate particularly well, but they, like I said, are cool and powerful. So let's see if Tommy can make it. Go for it, Tommy. All right, I'm in four low and we're gonna try the wall. Let's see if we have what it takes to crest this big climb. Now the point is not to take it with speed, it's to take it with finesse. Two footing it here. these big steps at the top of the wall making some kind of alarming clunks and groans out of the front of that truck but we just crested the wall I think Tommy bent the running board and there was a pretty worrying clank that came out of the front end but he made it all right Nathan your turn the only thing I'm really worried about is my approach angle once I get my tires up there I think I'll be all right bumper up here It puts down, but there's some sort of traction control things going on. It doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a lot of right foot took care of that. She didn't like it. She didn't like that either. All right, so we've never done this obstacle before. <laughs> I'm gonna climb the wall. I kind of need to go. Ooh. 
climbing, climbing. Traction, traction. Dang, man, the whole rock shook when that Ford went up. Wow, you really have to use some torque. 1,200 pound feet of it. The GMC is the only truck of the three with an independent front suspension. So my Ram and that Ford have a solid front axle, good off-road, but really compromised on-road. And so far, this GMC is performing pretty well with that independent front suspension, even though on paper, it shouldn't be doing as well. All right, boys, we brought about $300,000 worth of trucks to Moab. But my question is, obviously they're not cheap, but which one's the winner? Andre. It's mine, it's the most expensive. But above all else, I was relaxed in Moab. Usually I'm worried about dragging frames, ripping off my muffler. I, I didn't worry about any of those things. How about you, Nathan? Well, I'm one of the most expensive and I'm the least efficient. So, I won because at the same time, my vehicle has excellent handling for such a large, heavy beast out here. It does, it does. And, and most importantly, Tommy, mine really, really looks awesome off-road. Tommy. Well, for me, it's easy. The winner clearly is the GMC. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Why I'll give you some that? dough later. Look, it did everything the modified trucks did, and if it breaks, you can bring it to the GMC dealer, get it fixed. It's got all the cool AEV components right from the factory. Look, the other two are fantastic, but it's the stock truck on 35s. It's the best on road, the most comfortable. It's the winner. And I have massaging seats. I kept them on the whole time. Yeah. All right, guys. Next time we return to our regular scheduled programming by bringing, get this, not only cheap trucks, but tiny trucks. <laughs> Let me give you a little preview of what's coming up next in our cheap truck series. The turn signal, yeah, my knee's activating the, the turn signal, Alex. <laughs> Your seatbelt locked up. <laughs> uh, there are, you know, pretty serious crossovers that can't go up that new trenches course. We'll let the boys uh, figure out what to do with it. Now, the only question I have is who do we give this one to? Hmm. I, I got you the prize, Andre. What is it? Um, it's the love kit. Yes, give him the love kit. It's <laughs> expenses. It's a <laughs> cider. Like You're it's welcome. Part, it's part of the love uh, kit. <laughs> I'll have you know I spent a whole 75 cents on this. Is it burning your hand? That's really bad. Don't look in my direction. Let's keep moving on. Keep moving. <laughs>